the Best Docs Network helps you find some of the best doctors utilizing the latest procedures and practices in healthcare. Actual patients and the doctors themselves walk you through their stories that together help you make the best decision in your search for the right doctor. On today's episode, interventional cardiologist Dr. Annie Varghese talks about the dangers of heart disease in women. Facial plastic surgeon Dr. Yadro Ducic gives his patient a more balanced face with rhinoplasty and a chin implant. Family medicine doctor Richard Honecker addresses common health concerns in our medical minute. Minimally invasive spine surgeon Dr. Douglas Wan talks about his approach to spine care. And doctors from Forest Park Medical Center utilizing the latest in technology and techniques. I came to see Dr. Varaghese uh, on the advice of my primary care physician because uh, my blood pressure was a little elevated and my EKG reading was uh, a little off. She suggested that I take a stress test and uh, have some other procedures done uh, just to determine the causes of that. And uh, it was determined that I did have blockage in one of my arteries and a stent had to be implanted. And then reality sunk and Dr. Varaghese um, talked to me at, uh, during the recovery time and I asked her in tears, I asked her what was going on. And I, I asked her, was I about to have a heart attack? And she said, yes. Yolanda Garcia, to this day, she's so thankful that her primary care was um, cognizant enough to send her for evaluation because many times primary doctors or uh, nurse practitioners who see all of these patients, they may not recognize because the patient's not complaining much. So I, I think this is a wake-up call for all of us as physicians and healthcare providers to really focus on prevention, evaluating the patient early, getting them to the right uh, specialist on time. Because of her, I'm able to take care of my clients. Because of her, you know, I have a better life. So I really am appreciative of all she has done for me. Well, coronary disease in women especially is, uh, it's the number one killer of women in this country. And pretty soon will be the number one killer of women all over the world. And uh, in Hispanic women especially, there's a high prevalence of diabetes. So therefore diabetes uh, lends towards cardiovascular disease and, and coronary disease especially. It's just so important to educate our Hispanic population, our Indian population, because Indians die four times the rate of any other population from diabetes and cardiovascular disease. People are hungry for knowledge. It's just for the lack of knowledge we perish. Over 90% of diseases are caused or complicated by stress. Some ways to help deal with the stress in your life are exercising, listening to music, writing in a journal, or going for a walk. A surgical oncologist helps with management of cancer surgery, um, cancer care, helps coordinate the care of cancer with the uh, medical oncologist and the radiation oncologist. And a uh, majority of the cancers that require surgical resection, a surgical oncologist is the one that deals with those. The first step that I always do is educate the patient. You know, when you have a very educated patient about his disease process, he will be the uh, most compliant and understandable patient. My approach to uh, patient care with cancer is very comprehensive. I try to incorporate their emotional aspect of cancer care along with their psychological, their family aspects, along with the treatment that they need to undergo. And I try to educate them about how this will affect their lifestyles, how this will affect their interaction with the rest of the family, and uh, how this will also affect their livelihood as well. The uh, first and foremost step in terms of treatment will be accurate staging of cancer. 
and there are guidelines established uh, nationally that specifically identify the test and the procedures that need to be performed so you can have an accurate staging for cancer. Cancer is one disease process that affects your survival. Um, so when a patient is diagnosed with cancer, it's important that they take it very seriously because the sooner that you undergo treatment for cancer, the better the chances of survival are. The unique thing about cancer care is it is a multidisciplinary treatment approach. Uh, when a patient presents with cancer, the first thing that I like to do is to establish act care. I like to coordinate my care with the other team members. Typically, it's a medical oncologist and a radiation oncologist. So we have a multidisciplinary approach to cancer. Ideally, uh, you would want to have this team approach to cancer so that we are all on the same page and that uh, one arm of treatment knows what the other arm is doing. To learn more about Forest Park Medical Center and their doctors, go to bestdocsnetwork.com. Hi, I'm Jim Knox, and a lot of people have asked me, hey, what do you do away from the ballpark? Well, I am co-founder of a company called Identity Media Services. Our Emmy Award-winning production team can brand your company with videos, commercials, radio, and television, and our digital performance program specializes in lead generation, websites, and reputation management. So if your business needs a lift, give me a call, because as you know, it is tough to stay on top. Whew, that's gotta hurt. I didn't feel good about myself and I never wanted to go anywhere. Now my world has opened up. I occasionally go out with my girlfriends and we have a great time together. I was getting older and didn't really care about my weight, but my doctor said I needed to do something immediately. Now I'm spending time with my grandchildren and every moment seems special. My one reason was to live life again. My one reason was to simply live. So what's your one reason? Barker Bariatric Center. Log on or call today for your consultation. Find your doctor on bestdocsnetwork.com. I've done dance a majority of my life, ever since I was about two and a half when I first enrolled in tumbling. And over the years with mirrors and makeup and performing, I kind of realized something's wrong. I noticed my nose was not always the best it could look. Well, rhinoplasty essentially means reshaping the nose. When you look at the nose, it's in the middle of the face, um, and we don't really want to draw attention to the nose, whether it's positive or negative. The whole point is you want people to look at your eyes, you want them to look at your smile, your mouth, your overall facial appearance, and the nose you don't want to be a distraction. In terms of aesthetics, you really want to make the nose fit your face. Dr. Ducek is very open, he's extremely funny, he's very relatable, he gets very involved with his patients, he really tries to figure out how and what needs to be done to get the achieved goal. In terms of when to have a rhinoplasty, appropriate age is when patients are mature enough. You have to look at the facial features and facial growth. Sometimes you can do corrective nasal surgery on patients as young as 13 and 14 if their facial features are, are fairly well developed. Sometimes they're not ready till they're 17 or 18 or 19, and so you really have to individualize it. It's important to have a nose that is appropriate for your facial dimensions. You don't want a nose that's too small and somebody with wider cheeks. You don't want a nose that's too large or too prominent. And so it really is a matter of balancing it with the rest of your face. He explained to me that, you know, the balancing my face was off. He not only recommended a full rhinoplasty job for alignment on my nose, but he also recommended a four millimeter um, implant to my chin and my jaw so that it could help balance out my face. Now, to this day, about four or five years later, it has definitely made an improvement. I'm definitely more confident. And now, with my greater confidence, I've actually been able to have some modeling opportunities and gotten to actually show off my new presence and appearance. Tammy has a question for Dr. Jerry Lewis. What does a pain management doctor do? 
To me, a well-rounded pain management doctor will see a patient, they will evaluate their pain. Obviously, that's what brought them to the pain management physician in the first place. Do an appropriate physical exam, do appropriate testing, whether that be an MRI, nerve conduction studies, whatever that is. And also, you know, obviously after listening to the patient's history, doing a physical exam, looking at the diagnostic studies, then you piece all that information together to try to come up with the best solution or the best approach to that patient's pain. Some people have already had multiple surgeries, they have significant degeneration, and that might just be optimizing their medication management. Other people are healthy, they're young, maybe they've been over, uh, they have a, a low back and leg pain and they've herniated a disc and they respond to a simple epidural steroid injection. So there's, there's a big you know, variety of, of pain syndromes that come in that we're able to treat once we put that picture together and we individualize and tailor that treatment to that particular patient. Ask our doctors on bestdocsnetwork.com. Chest pain can be a scary thing. There are bad causes of chest pain and not so bad causes. So how do you know the difference? Well, generally the bad causes of chest pain, for example a heart attack, occur with a gradual onset. For example, the discomfort comes on gradually and then goes away gradually. It's usually exertional when you do things like run up a flight of stairs. It's usually dull, not sharp, and that means not like a knife. Knife-like chest pain doesn't tend to be uh, heart-related. Also, if it's heart-related chest pain, you'll tend to get other symptoms like shortness of breath, uh, you'll get a cold sweat, you might even get nauseated or have the pain uh, go to your jaw or to your arm. Now, non-heart-related chest pain is a lot easier to figure out and yet not nearly as uh, scary. For example, it's usually sharp, it's usually sudden, it's usually aggravated by motion. For example, if you have chest pain that's worse when you move or reach or bend or arch your back, that's generally muscles or nerves, uh, and that generally lasts long. So that's the way you can figure out whether this is hard or not hard, that and whether it's exertional. If you go up a flight of stairs and your chest pain gets worse, and that's pretty predictable every time you go up a flight of stairs, that may be your heart. Check that out, especially if you're older. And we welcome you inside the Best Talks Network studio. We are happy to be joined by Dr. Doug Wan. And when it comes to spine and neck surgery, this is your go-to doctor. He is also the director and founder of Spine Care. Dr. Wan, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank All you for right. having me. Let's start it off with your philosophy when it comes to your approach to medicine. What would that be? So we practice medicine based on, it's, it's, our approach is very patient-centric, providing that the best care for the patient. And when it comes to spine care, spine problems are a very complex issue. And so our approach is to approach it with a very comprehensive approach. So in our center, we have from the, the least invasive way to the most complex way of treating spine conditions. And we have uh, uh, providers such as chiropractors, physical therapists, physical medicine rehab doctors, interventional pain specialists, and minimally invasive spine surgeons. And we approach it through the multidisciplinary approach and find the best way to treat the patients so that they get the, the most amount of pain relief. All right, doctor, what was your goal in creating spine care? What did you have in mind? When we created a spine care, our goal is to provide the best kind of spine care to the patients. There are many patients with a very complex spine problems. However, not everyone may need spine surgery. So we uh, approach the spine through a multidisciplinary approach and we find the best way to treat the patients with significant back pain. That's why we have the, from the chiropractor to physical therapist, physical medicine rehab doctors, interventional pain specialist, and minimally invasive spine surgeon. We find the right diagnosis and treat the patient the right way and the least invasive way possible so that they can get their life back as soon as possible. Also at the spine care, we have high level imaging so that uh, patients do not have to travel elsewhere to get their imaging studies done. Also, we have our own procedure centers on campus, so therefore they can not only get the, the evaluation, but also pain procedures done, as well as spine surgery. To see the rest of this interview, as well as other outstanding videos, head to BestStocksNetwork.com. 
Coming up on the second half of today's show, podiatrist Dr. Gabriel Meislos treats his patient's chronic foot pain caused by plantar fasciitis. ENT Dr. C.T. Wynn helps his patient's sleep apnea and quality of life with an in-office procedure. Cosmetic dentist Dr. Guy Lewis talks about his philosophy and approach to practicing dentistry. Plastic surgeon Dr. David Altamira gives his patient the looks she's always wanted, as well as more doctors from Forest Park Medical Center utilizing the latest in technology and techniques. Mr. Weber, you know, he basically came in with typical symptoms of plantar fasciitis. You know, it hurts in the morning or, you know, I can't play golf because I'm just always in pain. And the plantar fasciitis, as anyone has ever had it, it's pretty painful, very, very painful, especially getting up in the morning. And Plantar fasciitis is a pain that, I, honestly, in my practice, I probably see 10 to 15 times a day. So typically, someone complains about that first step in the morning when they get down. When you bear weight, okay, your arch actually collapses and your foot gets longer, and this ligament-like structure that's on the bottom of the heel pulls from the heel bone. So when it pulls from the heel bone, you get inflammation. Inflammation triggers the pain cycle. So essentially, you know, every time that you're bearing weight, you're restarting the pain cycle and it's, so it's chronically inflamed tissue on the bottom of heel. Well, I, I have to say that uh, this procedure is really amazing. After the recovery time from the surgery, it really is immediate relief, immediate. The 10X procedure is basically, it's an ultrasonic device that allows you to debris the scar tissue. So when you have plantar fasciitis or any kind of you know, inflammation of a tendon, uh, you develop scar tissue, and so uh, using ultrasound for guidance and using a, like a micro tip, you're able to uh, debride the scar tissue, remove it, and basically, you know, start the healing process. The key feature about it is that it's, you know, a single incision, one suture, and uh, the patient can weight bear, uh, you know, immediately after. So it's cutting edge technology combined with minimal, you know, incision surgery. It's really remarkable. I mean, it's uh, truly. Truly remarkable. I don't have any pain in the area that it affected me. It was um, really, truly amazing. It's a 15 minute procedure. Uh, it's very precise because you're using an ultrasound machine for guidance so you can actually visualize the plantar fascia. Uh, and it's minimal incision, literally just one suture on the inside of the heel. Uh, so it's not on a weight bearing part, so you, you, know, you can immediately weight bear after the surgery. Uh, patients love it, and so I love having this as a new thing I can introduce to my practice. Request an appointment on bestdocsnetwork.com. My symptoms were like I would always wake up in the middle of the night having short breath, and then on the baseball field, like I would just I'd be the one bending over all the time. I was the only kid on the team that would always be slouched over. Uh, trying to grasp for a breath. And I would say that that was my major, major symptom right there, my major problem. Aaron is a young athletic teen whose mom brought him to see me because he was not, never been able to breathe through his nose. He feels tired all the time and uh, he complains that he doesn't have enough oxygen. He feels like he's short of breath. I've been to several different doctors around Houston and they've always like thought it was asthma or something else, but Dr. Wynn has taken his time to actually look, look into my nose and like go further into uh, seeing what was wrong with me. When I examined Aaron, I noticed that he has a severe deviated nasal septum combined with enlarged turbinate. The turbinate are the swollen part on the side wall of the nose which contribute to more than 75% of his nasal obstruction. We discussed those findings with his mom and him and decided upon a plan of treatment that consists first of uh, correcting his septum and using uh, energy, radio frequency, coblation to reduce the swelling on the side wall of his nose, uh, therefore increasing his nasal passage and increasing his oxygen intake. Two months out of my surgery, I feel like I can breathe a lot better. It feels like my performance in baseball has improved. It feels like I'm getting a really good, night, good night's rest every night. It just seems really 
amazing to finally uh, get that breath of air that I've always needed. Aaron surgery was performed in an outpatient surgery center. The procedure took around 45 minutes and Aaron goes home the same day. Dr. Wynn has forever changed my life. From when I was born to now, I could not breathe and now I can. We just appreciate what Dr. Wynn has done for my life. Carla has a question for Dr. Peter Morgan. What are the causes of venous insufficiency? The risk factors or causes of venous insufficiency are, um, first of all, genetic or hereditary. Patients that have uh, parents or grandparents or aunts or uncles that have large varicose veins are more likely to have disease that is caused by a genetic predisposition for the veins to get larger. The second risk factor is lifestyle issues, including jobs, occupations, or hobbies that result in standing or sitting for long periods of time. Ask our doctors on bestdocsnetwork.com. Switching out that bag of chips with your sandwich to three ounces of unsalted pistachios will help raise your HDL cholesterol, which is the good kind. gallbladder is part of our digestive tract and it specifically helps us in the digestion of fat. And so the gallbladder stores bile, which is made in the liver, and then when we have a meal like a cheeseburger or french fries, then the gallbladder is signaled to empty its bile down into the intestinal tract and help us break up that food. So it assists in the digestion of those foods. People in a large segment of the population have a genetic problem with the concentration of their bile and they cannot help that. It's not something they could change by diet or exercise and this problem with their bile leads to the formation of stones in their gallbladder. The best analogy is if you put too much sugar in a glass of iced tea, that sugar will settle to the bottom. And in people with gallbladder disease, they have the salts of bile settle to the bottom and ultimately over time your body will contract that stuff into sludge and then stones. And these rocks will begin to plug up the gallbladder's ability to empty itself and then people start having symptoms from it. People that have gallbladder attacks will usually have a, a progressive and worsening problem with episodes of pain, and it's usually associated with eating. So they'll go out and have pizza, and then 30 minutes to an hour later, they'll start complaining of severe abdominal pain. Usually it's kind of right in the upper part of their tummy, and commonly they have pain that radiates to their back. The gallbladder operation is one of the, the game changers of surgery that I've experienced in my career of 25 years. The old operation that we rarely do anymore involved an incision below your rib cage on the right side and that would require three days in the hospital and six weeks to get over. Now the common practice for removing gallbladders is done with a laparoscopic technique. Now the difference is how much faster you get well. And now the standard practice is that people will have a gallbladder operation and have it removed laparoscopically and go home the same day. So this has revolutionized the way that we treat people for gallbladder disease. To learn more about Forest Park Medical Center and their doctors, go to bestdocsnetwork.com. Find your doctor on bestdocsnetwork.com. Well, the spa dentistry concept is something that I am considered one of the pioneers in the spa dentistry field because I started doing this probably about 20 years ago. It feels like a high-end spa. It feels more um, aesthetically pleasing. One of the things we started with was just, you know, how the staff was dressed. A lot of them dress, we dress in black, which is a little classier looking. When you walk in, you know, you can tell you're not in your typical dental office. I mean, most people are like, wow, this is unbelievable, because it's, it's very nice. It's kind of like walking to someone's living room. The rooms that I treat patients in are more like suites. They're big rooms, 
They're not real closed in. They have couches in them so that family members or friends can come in and sit and be with them if they want to. But we also have TVs that are not only up in front of you where you can see them when you're sitting up in the chair, but we also have TVs in the ceiling so that when you're laying back in the chair, they're flat mounted large screen TV so you can watch TV, watch a movie, be relaxed, have your own headset, kind of go away, not have to hear all the sounds that are going on. We also have massage therapists that would could do foot massage or hand massage, hand paraffin treatments for ladies, especially guys like it too, but where they can dip their hands in the hot paraffin and, and get that done. Uh, just little touches that make it different, make it more of a relaxing experience. You know, most people equate going to the dentist like a trip to the dungeon, you know, and it just doesn't have to be like that. It can be nice, it can be comfortable, it can be actually relaxing. And uh, we have a lot of patients to tell us, you know, I love coming here and I love getting this done. It's no, it's no big deal. It's not like, you know, I heard my parents talking about this is totally different. So we've done a lot of different things to try to make it different from just the norm and different from what everybody else is doing and make it special, make them feel at ease. Watch more videos on bestdocsnetwork.com. I actually hurt my neck in a car accident when I was in my 20s and it's progressively gotten worse. My neck would stiffen up, it would hurt a lot and I'd put heat on it. I loved to read and I noticed I couldn't read anymore. So I had an MRI and found out that it was critical. That's when I realized I needed surgery and as a result found Dr. Brené. When Marilyn came, she obviously was in tremendous pain, so in her situation, we had to move quicker so that we can bring her the comfort that she needed. My neck seemed to like lock up and it would hurt at times, especially if I'd read or I noticed, you know, trying to turn. I was driving, uh, it was hard to do that, and it would depend on my activities, but it progressively just got worse through the years till, you know, I just could hardly stand it anymore. Her occurred from a degenerative process. What that is, is as the joint starting to age and uh, get degenerated, they can do so in such a way that abnormal tissue builds around this joint, bone spurs builds around this joint, and it causes pressure upon the adjacent nerves. She underwent her surgery uneventfully. We were able to clean up all the bone spurs and the disc tissue that was compressing on the nerve. She did have severe compression of the nerve, particularly at one of this level as it leaves the spine to go down the arm. He did a three-level fusion on my neck. And considering that in my age, I mean, I feel great. I feel like I could do cartwheels. <laughs> She was able to tolerate the intervention uneventfully. By the time she woke up, she was already able to notice the difference between the pain she was experiencing before and after that. He's a miracle worker. My neck is, is totally restored. I feel wonderful. The quality of life just seems a lot better because it don't hurt like I did. I can read. I can turn my neck better. I'm a little more comfortable driving. I had to go through the pain after the surgery, which takes a while to heal, but you know, that, hasn't, that wasn't that bad or that long. I, I feel like I've really turned a corner. Didn't find the doctor you're looking for on today's episode? Head to our website, bestdocsnetwork.com. There you can search our video library by topic, specialty, and doctor. The Best Docs Network helping you find the right doctor and bringing medical education to you.